my bangs are getting too long, but every time I go to trim them, I make myself nervous. Um, and I feel like, like eyeliner, I feel like bang cutting can smell fear. And if I'm afraid, I'm going to mess them up, right? So that's why they just keep getting longer and longer. Hello, friends, and welcome to another chatty little video. We'll call it a favorites video because I don't know what else to call it, but I'm just literally just going to yap at you. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I want to open this with some... I don't want to call it bad news because it's not bad news, it's kind of neutral news, but typically I have a chunk of my Halloween content done by now, and this is the first week of September and I have nothing done. I don't even have anything started. So you're definitely going to have some Halloween videos from me this October. I don't know how many though, and I don't know what. I don't really have a ton of ideas this year, and I also don't really have a ton of time now that I have an in-person, everyday kind of job. Um, so... If you have any suggestions of anything in particular you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your ideas, but I don't know, like, usually I have started shooting my Halloween videos in July, and then the week in August that my parents go away on vacation, they take the dog, so the house is really quiet, and I shoot a ton of videos that week. Like, that's usually the the, the week where I hammer out, like, the Voldemort and the Nosferatu and the, the anything with a bald cap, pretty much, um, and I didn't do any this year, so... I don't know, but I have started collecting things from my treat bags, and throughout the month of August, I would, like, have... I'm gonna call them nightmares, but it's not that serious. In these nightmares, I would go to bed, and it would be, like, August, like, whatever, 20th or whatever, and then I would, like, wake up, and it's October 31st. And I didn't do any videos, I have nothing for my treat bags, I have, like, nothing ready. Um, so, the fact that I had treat bag items, some of them now, makes me feel better. I don't have everything, but I have some stuff. Um, so, there's definitely gonna be treat bags. Alyssa and I are doing a market, um the Saturday before, so we're gonna bring some toys and stuff there too, in case there's kids that can't take, like, candy or chocolate. And then I'm gonna, because I have a physical in-person workplace this year, I'm gonna bring some, like, little tree bags for some, some of my co-workers and stuff too, and then as well as making my boo baskets for my two older sisters. Like, I have stuff going on that's Halloween-y, I just don't know how much of it is going to translate into content, and I don't know how much of my, like, regular, usually usual Halloween content you're gonna get, especially, not to be like a views person, but I work really hard on that content, and it sometimes gets like, no views. And it's not even that I work hard on it, it's that I usually have to buy all the prosthetics, and the, like, it's expensive, is what I'm trying to say. And, I don't know, we'll see, I haven't made up my mind yet on what's gonna happen and what's not gonna happen, but if you don't get as many Halloween videos from me this year, know that it's not because I don't love Halloween the way I always do, it's just because I don't know what to make and I ran out of time. <laughs> anyway, now that that's done, we're going to talk about some things that I love, and I have two makeup items that I want to start with, and they are both hand-me-downs, if you will, from my older sister. So Sam bought herself the e.l.f. Soft Glam Satin Foundation, and she bought it for herself in a shade that was accidentally too light for her, which means I got it. And you know what? I really like this. You're actually going to get, like, a full dedicated review video on this, I think, like, next week or something. Uh, this is incredible. I wear the shade 13, Fair Neutral. This, on my oily parts of my face, this, I become, like, a grease ball, but on my drier sections of my face, I am wearing it, like, sort of through this area now. I don't have to be really careful when I apply it, because it's a very, like, it's a coverage that isn't very thick. And it matches my skin tone perfectly, so you cannot see the edges where, like, it's I don't have it versus where I do have it. It's just really nice. It really keeps my skin hydrated and glowy while also sort of evening out the tone. I can kind of wear it like a tinted moisturizer type deal, um, but it does say it's buildable. I don't know if that's true. I've never tried to build it. I just kind of pour some out and rub it in with my hands, or I'll use a brush. That's about it. But this is a really great, newer, drugstore $10 foundation product that I recommend, but you know I love e.l.f., so. And then the other one, my sister said this is becoming one of her new favorite eyeliners, and it's from Dollar Tree. It is the LA Colors Eye Marker. It is the eyeliner I'm wearing right now, and it is just like one of those standard sort of felt-tipped eyeliners. I will get to audiobooks in a second, but I was listening to an audiobook at work the other day, and I was crying. I was crying in the club. I was sitting at my desk by, by myself with just like silent tears streaming down my face, and this didn't move. It did not move. My mascara maybe flaked a little bit, but this was there, and that's how I know this is a good eyeliner. So, if you're in the market for a cheapy eyeliner that I actually really like, Dollar Tree, man. LA Colors. And I know this is American, because there's no U in the word color. And then the last beauty thing I wanted to talk about... <laughs> you're gonna think this is so silly, but I... I'm very much so a person where, like, these things go together, and these things go together, and then these things go, go together, right? 
I blew my own mind the other day when I realized that I can use my Mooncat like nail polish base and top coat with my Sally Hansen colors. The Mooncat nail polishes don't only have to go with the Mooncat nail polishes. That's so wild to me. And I was like lamenting this because I have only a couple of Mooncat colors and I didn't buy a black and I didn't buy like an orangey and I was like, I want to wear these, blah, 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 but yeah, I can mix and match. So I bought this Sally Hansen shade. It is the shade I'm wearing right now. It is called A Hot Minute. I am very particular when it comes to nail polishes. I pretty much only use Mooncat and the Sally Hansen Miracle Gels. So I really wanted like a sort of burnt orangey pumpkin spicy color for going into this fall season. So I googled orange Sally Hansen Miracle Gel nail, nail polish. Now the thing about this one is that some older pictures and videos that came up when I googled it made it look bright red and some of the newer pictures and videos made it look like this orangey color. So I'm thinking it was reformulated somewhere along the line. I did try to find it at Walmart physically first, and the first Walmart I went, I went to, I couldn't find it, so then I ordered it from Amazon. Spoiler alert, it was at the second Walmart I went to, but I already had it, and it was this nice orange. So if you're looking for, like, a sort of very fall sort of orange that's not bright, I don't really like bright nails. I prefer darker sort of, like, that sort of vibe. This is a, real, a really nice color, and I really like it, and I find that it lasts a really long time when paired with the Mooncat base and top coat. This past weekend, I did a Lord of the Rings marathon, as I often do. Watched all three extended editions, because a couple months ago, I bit the bullet and I bought them, like the streaming of them on Prime Video. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this to you is not only just because I love these movies, but I am requesting your assistance because I only own the theatrical versions on DVD. I know that's a crime, right? They were present when I was a youth, and I don't own the, the extended editions. Not only do I want to own them because the extended editions are incredible, but I want the bonus features. I want to watch the making. I want to watch them with commentary. Like, that is so me, and I can't ever find them on DVD. What is this? Why is it so hard? Like, I look on Amazon, I go to the physical movie stores, and I can't ever find the extended editions on DVDs. So if you guys ever find listings for them anywhere, or know where I can get the extended edi editions of Lord of the Rings, I'll buy the Hobbit ones too, I don't care. Um, let me know, especially if they're not a gajillion dollars, uh, because I don't own them, and I really want to. I mean, I love Lord of the Rings, and I have literally been to Hobbiton, and I don't own the extended editions on DVDs, and I'm such a physical media girly. Like, our cable went out on Saturday for pretty much the whole day, and we didn't have internet and cable, obviously. But I was like, this is fine. I own all of the best movies on DVD. But I only have the theatrical cuts of War of the Rings. <laughs> so, this is a thing that must be rectified. I must have the extended editions. And that actually leads perfectly into the next thing I want to talk about, which is audiobooks. Because it... So I was never able to read the Lord of the Rings books because... I'm just not smart enough, is the answer I've decided I'm just going to give people. There are too many words in Lord of the Rings that are made up by Tolkien, which is fine, but it's like, if I read a word and I don't immediately know how to pronounce it, my brain is just going to kind of hum, 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 over it, and there's too many words like that in Lord of the Rings that I end up just kind of like hum, hum, humming over like massive blocks of text. That, coupled with the fact that he likes to describe hills for like three pages, my brain just like glazes over. But I remembered that I already knew that Andy Serkis does the audiobooks for Lord of the Rings. And at my job, because I just kind of sit at my desk by myself all day working on the computer, I've gotten really into listening to audiobooks. So once I'm done Akatar, which we're going to talk about in a second, I think I'm going to listen to the Lord of the Rings ones. Because they're all there on Audible. I don't mind buying them. That's fine. I'm really enjoying listening to audiobooks these days, and I just think I would love having the Lord of the Rings books in my head. You know what I mean? Because I know that there is so much that they had to take out for the movies. I get it. It makes sense. Like, you have to do that, right? And there's, like, whole characters that they took out. Even if the general storyline and, like, the big events are the same, there's so much more. I know there's so much more. And I want to know what happens. So that is my next thing, I think. Once I'm done, Akatar is Lord of the Rings. But right now, I just finished A Court of Wings and Ruin. And I started Frost and Starlight this morning, even though it's only six hours long. So I should really be done it by the time this video is up. 
And then I'm going to do Silver Flames, which is the book I know that's in Nesta's po point of view. And that one, I think, I think that audiobook is like 22 hours long, so that'll be quite a hefty one. <sighs> Here's the thing. 30-year-old Abby listening to the Akotar books. I really enjoy them. They really, like, activate my 16-year-old heart. They're really, like, cute, and I'm really enjoying them, and there's so many elements to them that I love. But there are also elements that are a little bit eye-rolly. Like, sometimes, sometimes there are parts of it that are a little cringe, and things that are said that are a little cringe. And something that really bothered me about Wings and Ruin, no spoilers, but it kind of, um... The same thing kind of happened with Game of Thrones, right? Like, in the TV show, where they had all this set pacing, and they were doing all of these, like, fun little, you know, like, other storylines, and it really felt like it was building, and then it felt like one day the HBO overlords, like, ran into the writer's room, and they're like, actually, we're gonna end the show, and you only have eight episodes to wrap up all your storylines. Bye! And they had to kind of throw out all of the smaller things, and, I don't know, like, Game of Thrones had been so good at, like, giving you lore and explaining things that when they had to wrap up everything really quickly in that last season, so many things got kind of thrown to the wayside that I think that's why that last season isn't very well received is because it was completely against the established timeline and pacing. I always believed, even from the beginning of Game of Thrones, that Danny was destined to be the Mad Queen, right? But the way she just kind of pivoted is what really throws us off because we had seen such this like slow build of her being the mother of dragons, the breaker of chains, and then it was all of a sudden she's in King's Landing and she's burning everything down. I kind of feel that way about the end of Wings and Ruin. Like, so many things happen at once that I was kind of like, what? How does that make sense? How does that work? And then they just never get explained or they never get sort of visited further. It kind of feels like someone ran into Sarah J. Mass's room and said, okay, I need you to finish this book by the end of the day. Okay, what was I saying before I was so rudely interrupted by my camera dying? Oh yeah, the end of Wings and Ruin felt kind of rushed to me. Just like the last little bit. And I don't want you guys to take this the wrong way. Because it makes me sound sort of insane. <laughs> I just don't love a shiny, happy ending. You know what I mean? It was one of the things I loved about Harry Potter. I never read all the Harry Potter books, but I obviously saw all the movies. And saw them all in theaters and everything. I know that... I wouldn't go see them now, knowing what we know about JK, but that my generation, we grew up with Harry Potter. You can't change the past, right? Something I really always loved about Harry Potter was that in that last, in Deathly Hallows, in the in the story of Deathly Hallows overall and in the Battle of Hogwarts, like, you lose, you lose a little bit. You win, but you lose, right? Some really great characters, some of my favorite sort of side characters don't make it out of there. And without spoiling what happens at the end of Wings and Ruin, it felt kind of, to me, like a lot of build-up for nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. I'm just so weird. <laughs> in, in real life, I want the shiny happy ending, okay? But, like, in fiction, you can upset me a little bit. Like, I hate when I finish a book that was, like, the end of a trilogy, basically, and I don't cry. Like, I want to cry. Come on. Upset me a little bit. And w if you read the book, I'll tell you this, but I'll try not to spoil it for anyone who hasn't. When the thing happens at the end of Wings and Ruin, I just kind of rolled my eyes and was like, she'll fix this. She'll fix it somehow. And she did, and it was really easy. And I was like, ugh. Ugh. It's so easy. It was sort of akin to me to the end of Twilight, like in Breaking Dawn, when they had that big face-off with the Volturi. But not only is there no fight, nothing happens. It's a big nothing burger. They, like, meet in a big, like, meadow. And then they just leave. That's why the movie had to add the fight scene, I bet. I bet anything. Some person at the stu at Lionsgate was, like, read the book and was like, no, we have to put something in here so that there's some action and so that something actually happens here. <laughs> Even if it's just Alice's vision. At least something happens. And, 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 and I just don't know that I felt like something happened. <laughs> And maybe that's just me being insane. I don't know. I don't know. I still enjoyed it. I still gave Wings and Ruin, I think, four stars on Goodreads. Miss and Fury is still my favorite. I gave it five. Um, and now I'm on Frost and Starlight. And yeah, I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying being in my little, my little fairy girl audiobook era. And then we'll go to Lord of the Rings. And the thing is, I've been so into listening to Akatar that I haven't actually read anything else on my Kobo in a little bit. But 
I feel like once I'm done Frost and Starlight, because I know that the last, um, like, Court of uh, Silver Flames, I know that it's in a different character's POV, I feel like I'll be able to start a book on my Kobo at that point, because I won't be as emotionally invested, because it's not the same storyline that's carried out throughout X many other books, right? So, I don't know, I feel like I can, I can start something else rather than using all my time with one thing. Does that make any sense? Or am I just rambling again? Like I always am. That sounds about right. I made a pumpkin. Do you want to see? Look it. I made this little pumpkin. How cute! I haven't been in my crochet game in a while. Because my hands are becoming old lady hands and they, they hurt sometimes. But I'm trying to get back into it. Oh, another favorite I should have mentioned is this book loft candle. I bought the wallflower and I showed you that. But then I went back and I bought the candle because... I think I don't realize how often Bath & Body Works has sales. <laughs> like, these candles are usually like 40 bucks, but then like randomly they're only 13. I don't really know what that marketing plan is, but I, I went back and I bought the Book Love candle. I wish it came in a single wick. If it came in a single wick, I'd put it in my sister's um, boo baskets, but I'm not giving them a three-wick candle. I love them, but I don't love them three-wick candle, you know? I feel bad that I watched all the Lord of the Rings movies this weekend because there's actually a whole bunch of horror movies that they just put on Prime that I've been really wanting to watch. They just put Abigail there, they just put Immaculate, and you can rent Long Legs. I really wanted to see Long Legs in theaters, but I didn't go because I think even like the weekend after it came out, it was only showing at like night. And I like to see a movie in the in like the, the middle of the day. I love a matinee, right? Okay, side note about movies. When did they get so expensive? I pre-ordered two tickets to Beetlejuice Beetlejuice so that my sister and I can go next Saturday, so the day after this video goes up. And I, like, you can prepay for concessions and stuff too. I didn't do that. I just bought the two tickets and it was $42. How, how is that a thing? When I was a kid and my parents first got divorced, my mom used to take my younger sister and I to the movies all the time. And I feel like it was not $42 for two, two tickets. Like, I'm, I'm baffled. And... The part that really gets me is at our theater, they recently upgraded all the seats. So they're kind of like big and plush and they kind of recline a little bit and there's like a foot thing that comes out. And then additionally, there's also premier seats that you can get there a little bit farther back. They're like uh, almost like a big couch with like enclosed sides and there's like spots you can hang stuff. And, you know, that's great. And so if I was getting one of those seats, maybe I would understand why it was $21 a ticket, but I'm in a wheelchair. I have a void. I have a spot that I park my own chair in. $21 for an empty space. That's wild. I'm so upset by that. And the part that really kills me is that it is actually cheaper to just wait till it comes on streaming, even if I have to rent it on streaming. Because at least then I'm eating my own snacks, sitting in my own house, I don't have to pay for transportation to get there. I don't have to pay for drinks or snacks or anything because I've already bought them. They're already in the house. I don't know, man. I'm just really, like, blown away by this $21 a ticket. That's obviously including, like, tax and everything. But, like, I don't even get to enjoy one of the comfy seats because I picked the wheelchair parking space. That's so wild. I should be able to take my ticket to, like, a person at the theater. And they can, like, look at me and know that I'm clearly disabled and then, like, give me half the money back or something. Like, what? $21 for a wheelchair parking spot. Anyway, I think that's all the things I wanted to talk to you about in this specific video. I wore my murder apparel dress because it's very summery to me. But then I also have on, like, the orange lips and the orange nails. So we're kind of crossing into spooky season territory, uh, because I think today is September 3rd? Yes. So, like, by the time this video goes up, I will be fully shifted into soup mode. But for now, I'm kind of trying to, like, transition. <laughs> and then I will actually cut my bangs at some point. Look, my natural hair color has grown out to, like, here at this point. We're getting there. Although I do have to tell you that I've been missing my black hair lately. I have been. <sighs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to redye my hair black. It's not going to happen anytime soon. It might happen someday, but I want to have, like, a full head of my own hair first. So, yeah. But I do miss it. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. 
and just say thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so sorry that I rambled about everything. I don't even know what I said. I'm not going to have fun editing this video at this point. <laughs> um, what have you loved lately? What books and makeup and, and, and movies have you been enjoying? Have you seen any of the movies that I told you that I want to see, including Beetlejuice? Have you seen it? Are you excited for it? I remain cautiously optimistic. I'm hesitant about sequels that come out like 30 plus years after the original one, but Winona Ryder had this cute quote. She said they were waiting for Jenna Ortega to be born. And I just thought that was such like a sweet answer, and it made me more excited for the movie because I just love that answer. I think it's cute. Even if it's like... Obviously, they weren't waiting for Jenna Ortega to be born, but it's cute. I don't know. I like it. I thought it was a cute answer. Are there any movies that you're excited to see coming up at all? I think other than Beetlejuice, the only other one that I'm really excited to see is the Nosferatu remake, which comes out on Christmas, because I don't think there's been one. Has there? Not to my knowledge, there hasn't been one since the original Black and White, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. Robert Eggers, I think, made the this one, right? Maybe? I've done it again and I'm rambling for no reason. Sorry. Anyway, I love you so much. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you have not subscribed already, and I will see you next time. Bye!